Hello, welcome to SkepVet TV. I'm Dr. Brandon McKenzie and I'm the SkepVet. Today I want to talk about a subject which is of great concern to a lot of my clients. The question, do grain-free diets cause heart disease in dogs? So first I want to start by uh, discussing some of the specific concepts that we're talking about and go a little bit through the history of how this uh, issue arose and then finally where are we now in terms of the evidence and what should you do as a dog owner if you're concerned about this. To begin with, what is a grain-free diet? Well, the traditional ingredients in dog foods for a long time have included grains such as corn and wheat. In the early 2000s, diets that did not have these ingredients in them started to become more popular. And between about uh, 2011 and 2019, grain-free diets had gone from being relatively uncommon to being about 40% or more of the dog foods on the market. So there was quite a surge in popularity of these diets. A grain-free diet still has to have carbohydrates in it, and it still has to have proteins and other plant ingredients. So these are diets that typically substitute the traditional grains, such as corn and wheat, for some other source of carbohydrates or plant proteins. Common sources include legumes or pulses, things like lentils or peas, sometimes potatoes, taro, tapioca starch, things like that. So grain-free diets are not carbohydrate-free or low-carb diets. They're simply diets that have replaced one plant source of protein and carbohydrate with another. Now, in some of the discussions of diet and heart disease in dogs, other diet characteristics besides being grain-free have been raised as possible concerns. You may have heard the acronym BEG, B-E-G, for diets in this category. In addition to grain-free, which is what the G stands for, these are diets that are made by what are called boutique manufacturers. These are small, relatively new companies with not quite the uh, track record of some of the larger manufacturers and who may not have the quality control mechanisms or uh, the expertise of veterinary nutritionists in their diet formulation. E in BEG stands for exotic protein sources. Some of the diets that have been uh, discussed as possible concerns for heart disease in dogs have had protein sources in them that are unusual, that are uncommon. Traditionally, beef, chicken, pork, those have been common protein sources in dog diets. But some new diets have been uh, introduced with unusual protein sources with the idea of potentially helping uh, treat food allergy. These include protein sources such as fish or lamb, uh, kangaroo, buffalo, or bison, some very unusual protein sources. Now, when you introduce new food ingredients, such as legumes or exotic proteins, you are introducing ingredients that we know less about. We have a pretty good sense of the nutritional composition of traditional proteins, such as beef and chicken, and of the grains and other traditional carbohydrate sources in dog diets, and we know what the bioavailability of these nutrients is, how easily dogs can digest and make use of the nutrients in these sources. With new ingredients, we know less about the composition of those ingredients and about the availability of their nutrients to dogs. So one concern has been that these less familiar ingredients uh, may not have the same nutritional uh, value as traditional ingredients such as beef and chicken or corn and wheat. Okay, so we have some idea of what kinds of diets we're talking about. Primarily grain-free, potentially some other characteristics such as the size of the manufacturer and the protein source. So what kind of heart disease are we talking about? Well, the primary concern is something called dilated cardiomyopathy, or DCM. This is a disease in which the heart muscle becomes thin and stretched out, the heart gets very enlarged, and it's not able to pump blood effectively. It's sort of like a water balloon that's been overfilled. It's very stretched out and big, but it's not able to pump blood effectively, and this leads to a number of clinical problems. In the early stages, with mild DCM, dogs may not have any symptoms at all, but as the heart gets more stretched out and weaker, they may have uh, loss of exercise capacity, they may have collapsing episodes, Dogs with advanced DCM will eventually develop congestive heart failure. This is where the blood backs up in the vessels, sort of like water backing up in a pipe, and then fluid leaks out either into the abdomen or into the lungs, giving them either a belly full of fluid or sometimes a great deal of difficulty breathing. Dilated cardiomyopathy has been around in dogs for a long time, but it has typically been associated with genetic causes in specific breeds. Part of what's interesting with this new concern about diet and DCM is that breeds that have not traditionally been associated with genetic DCM seem to be developing the disease. And the question then arises, is there some reason for this that has to do with the diets we're feeding? 
So the history behind this question is that for many years, the uh, Food and Drug Administration, which regulates dog foods, has been receiving occasional reports of dogs with dilated cardiomyopathy, about one or two a year. But in the first half of 2018, the FDA received a significantly increased number of these reports, 16 in the first half of that year. And this triggered some concerns because most of the dogs, over 90% of the dogs that were reported to the FDA with DCM, were eating grain-free diets or diets with other characteristics we've discussed, such as exotic proteins. This caused the FDA to wonder if maybe there was a connection here and to make an announcement to the public and to veterinarians that this was a possible concern and we should be on the lookout for dogs with this condition and dogs eating these grain-free diets. Following this announcement in 2018 and to subsequent announcements in 2019, a significant increase was noted in the report of these DCM cases. Obviously, people and veterinarians had become aware of this concern and started to look for these cases, and many, many more were reported. At last count, 1,100 dogs have been reported to the FDA with dilated cardiomyopathy, and the vast majority, over 90%, have been eating diets that are grain-free or contain grain substitutes such as peas or lentils. So the hypothesis that's been put forward is that something about these grain-free or BEG diets is triggering dilated cardiomyopathy. Exactly what isn't clear, and nobody claims to know for sure what the answer to that is. One hypothesis is that these diets somehow interfere with the production or metabolism of an amino acid called taurine. Taurine is an essential amino acid for cats. They have to get it from their food. It's not an essential amino acid in dogs in that they can produce it themselves. It's essential in the sense that they need it, but essential in terms of amino acids means they have to get it from their diet. Taurine is not an essential amino acid, and dogs can produce it from cysteine and methionine and other sources. Many of the dogs, particularly the golden retrievers, who've been seen with dilated cardiomyopathy on grain-free diets, have had a deficiency in taurine. And many of these dogs have improved clinically when given taurine along with other treatments. So one hypothesis is that these diets either don't contain enough of the amino acids necessary for dogs to make taurine, or in some way they reduce taurine production or increase taurine excretion such that dogs are becoming deficient in taurine and this is damaging their heart. There are a couple of problems or questions with this hypothesis. One is that apart from the golden retrievers, many of the dogs who have dilated cardiomyopathy and are on these grain-free diets are not actually deficient in taurine. So there seems to be at least two, maybe more, mechanisms involved here, and taurine is only involved in one of them. Another hypothesis is that there is some other feature of these BEG diets that may be causing cardiomyopathy in dogs. For example, there may be some toxin in these ingredients, in these exotic proteins or in these pulses or legumes that damages the heart in some way we haven't yet figured out. Or it may simply be that these ingredients, which are not as well studied as conventional proteins and plant ingredients, may lack some other nutritional component that is essential for heart health in some dogs, if not all dogs. Everyone who has raised this hypothesis has been very clear to say that it is just that, a hypothesis. There seems to be an association between these diets and this heart condition, but we aren't entirely sure if that is real, or if so, if it is real, what the cause is. This is an area of open research and investigation. So what is the evidence to show that dilated cardiomyopathy may be caused by grain-free diets or diets with other characteristics such as exotic proteins? Well, the argument made is that there is an increase in the number of DCM cases being seen in dogs who do not have the traditional genetic predisposition to this disease. One survey of cardiology practices found that cardiologists felt they were seeing more of these cases in these non-typical breeds. At the same time that this is occurring, the popularity of grain-free diets has increased significantly. As I mentioned, these were quite uncommon in the early 2000s, and now they represent over 40% of the dog food out on the market. So the hypothesis is that the increase in grain-free diet popularity has gone along with an increase in the frequency of dilated cardiomyopathy in dogs of atypical breeds, and this suggests that there may be a causal relationship there. The evidence is not entirely clear on this point, however. Some other surveys of cardiology practices have not found any increase in either the number of cases of DCM or in DCM cases in unusual breeds. 
And the fact is that the increase in the popularity of grain-free diets has been tremendous, whereas even if there is an increase in dilated cardiomyopathy, it's been a relatively small number of dogs. So it suggests that there must be, at the very least, other factors involved. Perhaps there are dogs who have a genetic predisposition to cardiomyopathy that only manifests if some dietary trigger comes along, but most dogs are not going to develop heart disease when exposed to that diet. At this point, we really don't know for sure if there is an increase in the incidence of this disease or in the atypical breeds who are experiencing it. There is, of course, a great deal of controversy around the hypothesis that diet may be causing dilated cardiomyopathy in dogs. Some of this controversy is part of the normal competitive scientific process. When one individual proposes a hypothesis, other people look at that hypothesis and look for holes and weaknesses in it. Different groups with different predispositions, different biases, do their research independently and challenge one another's ideas, and as a community, scientists are able to come to a better understanding. So this is a normal part of the scientific process, and we should expect controversy and competition over these ideas. There is, however, another factor, of course, which is economics. The fact that grain-free diets are quite profitable is a relevant issue here. And the fact that after the FDA announced concerns about grain-free diets, sales declined is another issue. There's been a great deal of pushback against the hypothesis that these diets may be related to heart disease, and a lot of that has come from manufacturers of grain-free diets. This is not surprising. They've seen their revenues decrease because of an unproven hypothesis that may or may not actually be true. However, it's important that we at least understand that financial bias, while it's not avoidable, doesn't entirely invalidate scientific research. The idea that just because a company stands to make money from a product, all the research that it funds into that product is completely worthless is a misconception. Science has built into it mechanisms for accounting for bias like that and for generating reliable data even in the face of that. One of these mechanisms is simply the disclosure of financial bias. We can all take research results with an extra grain of salt if we know that there is some potential funding bias involved. This has been a subject that's received a lot of discussion recently because of a literature review that was published looking at the question of whether diet could be a risk factor for cardiomyopathy in dogs. This research review pretty clearly came out against the idea that there was any merit to this hypothesis. Part of the problem with this is that the authors did not initially disclose that they either work for companies making grain-free diets or for nutritional companies that do consulting for grain-free diet companies. Some of these consulting companies have since taken grant funding from pulse manufacturers in order to research the subject of diet and cardiomyopathy. Now, none of this means that these authors are wrong. It simply means that they do have a perspective that we need to take into account when evaluating their claims and arguments. So the question then for pet owners is, what should I do? Should I stop feeding grain-free diets? Well, the first thing to understand is that there is no evidence that grain-free diets have any health benefits. Though they've been promoted as helping to prevent or treat allergies, there's no scientific research showing that this is true. There's also no actual scientific evidence that grains are bad for dogs, that they cause health problems. Some of the popularity of grain-free diets probably comes from the anxiety about gluten and grains in the human nutritional field. Much of that has turned out to be unfounded, and there's really no reason to think that grain-free diets are healthier for your dog. Whether or not grain-free diets actually increase health risks, particularly the risk of cardiomyopathy, is still unclear. The evidence is not ironclad by any means, and at this point, we're looking at a hypothetical or potential risk. I often suggest to my clients that because there's no clear benefit to grain-free diets, and there is some potential, but as yet unproven risk, it might not be a bad idea to avoid these diets or to consider not feeding a diet that has a legume such as peas or lentils in the first five to 10 ingredients, particularly if you have a dog of a breed that's been reported to develop cardiomyopathy in some of these FDA studies. For example, golden retrievers, Newfoundlands, American Cocker Spaniels, dogs with a predisposition or a history of showing dilated cardiomyopathy. If you have a dog who is eating a grain-free diet and it's doing well and you don't feel appropriate to change diet, Consider having your dog screened for cardiomyopathy. As I mentioned, in the early stages, this is often asymptomatic. So having uh, your veterinarian take a look at the heart with an ultrasound, if that's something they're able to do, or seeing a veterinary cardiologist, if your veterinarian is not able to do that, is a reasonable precaution. Running certain blood tests that look at heart function or that measure taurine levels, or doing other things to investigate the possibility that there could be hidden heart disease is a reasonable precaution. 
particularly if your dog is of a breed like golden retrievers that have been shown to develop cardiomyopathy while consuming these grain-free diets. Finally, if you do have a dog who develops cardiomyopathy, even if it is a breed that is known to be pro prone to this genetically, it's not unreasonable to consider changing diet or supplementing taurine. The encouraging thing about this new issue is that dogs who develop cardiomyopathy while eating these grain-free diets have actually been shown to make full or partial recoveries with diet change and taurine supplementation, along with other conventional treatments. It's not entirely clear whether the diet change is the important factor, but it is certainly exciting and encouraging that these dogs are getting better, and I think it is reasonable to consider changing diets if you have a dog who develops this condition. I hope this has been helpful. There's a lot more detailed information on my blog, including links to all of the major research articles so far published on this topic. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again on SkepVet TV.